Welcome back to the Romania River channel and likely the last episode, probably, I hope. Cause going to casual just to kill a fucking dragon cause they keep spamming me in the ass with spears is a low point. Okay, we are not going to be cheating though, so we're gonna be setting it to non-casual again. Anchor meltdown, the macro now builds up power even faster, using it is difficult, but discharges all cumulative focus. If the focus reaches full power, the anchor discharges uncontrollably, damaging you and your allies as well as nearby enemies. If it keeps up like this, it will kill you. Solus must help as he did at Haven. Chuckles, who apparently works for Fen Harel. It's always the quiet ones. That must be where Solus is. Yeah, good luck with that. God, I fucking hate this shit. Fuck off, you cunt. Ah, oh, this game's annoying towards the end. You'd think with all this grind and near perfect weapons it would be easier, but no.
Burn, baby, burn. <sighs> I think we're getting so much damage because we're getting close to the big bitch. The boss bitch. You're having fun up there, aren't you, Cassandra? Get up, you bitches. I think I should have selected a heavier weight guy.
Die, bitch. Time to die, bitch. Okay, 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 okay. Ole, ole. Ole, ole. Yeah, I'm getting a wee bit weird. Shrine of the Dread Wolf. Well, I'm here for the cinematic, so fuck it. If they wanna fuck me, I'm going to fuck them even harder. Jesus Christ, what sort of even fight is this? Don't judge me, I'm not even fucking around anymore.
Come here, cunt. Enjoy getting your soul sucked into oblivion, you fucking cunts. I'm here to actually have fun, not... Kunari female, he is. Dogs die. Okay. <sighs> One can imagine how fucking annoying this would be.
Man, is this guy tanky. Taking a long time to die, you little bastard. What you're gonna say about this guy momentarily? No loot? You son of a bitch! That looks different though. Stoned. Quite stoned. first. 
Fan Harrell came later. The insult I took as a badge of pride. The Dread Wolf inspired hope in my friends, and fear in my enemies. Not unlike Inquisitor, I suppose. You also know the burden of a title that all but replaces your name. The Dalish legends about the evil trickster god are wrong. I saw the truth in the crossroads. You saw another story, written in desperation to give me more credit than I ever deserved. You were a hero, Solas. I sought to set my people free from slavery to would-be gods. I broke the chains of all who wished to join me. The false gods called me Fen Harel. And when they finally went too far, I formed the veil and banished them forever. Thus, I freed the elven people. And in so doing, destroyed their world. You love the faith. Why would you create the veil to hide it all away? Because every alternative was worse. Meaning? Had I not created the veil, the Avenueris would have destroyed the entire world. You banished the false gods? You didn't kill them? You met Methol, did you not? The first of my people do not die so easily. The Avenueris are banished forever, paying the ultimate price for their misdeeds. You said that the Elven Gods went too far. What did they do that made you move against them? They killed Mithor. <laughs> the crime for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. I thought Mithor was one of the Evanuris. She was the best of them. She cared for her people. She protected them. She was a voice of reason. And in their lust for power, they killed her. How did creating the veil destroy the world? You saw the remains of Dathara. The library was intrinsically tied to the Fae, and the veil destroyed it. There were countless other marvels, all dependent on the presence of the Fae, all destroyed. The elven legends of immortality, all true. It was not the arrival of humans that caused them to begin aging. It was me. The veil took everything from the elves. Even themselves. The Evan Eurus were elven mages. How did they come to be remembered as gods? Slowly. It started with a war. War breeds fear. Fear breeds a desire for simplicity. Good and evil, right and wrong, chains of command. After the war ended, generals became respected elders, then kings. Finally, gods. The Avenuris. That's the past. What about the future? I lay in dark and dreaming sleep while countless wars and ages passed. I woke still weak a year before I joined you. My people fell for what I did to strike the Avenuris down. But still, some hope remains for restoration. Save the elven people, even if it means this world must die. Solas, whatever you want, this world dying is not the answer. Not a good answer, no. Sometimes terrible choices are all that remain. It is my fight. You should be more concerned about the Inquisition, your Inquisition. In stopping the Dragon's Breath, you have prevented an invasion by Canari forces. With luck, they will return their focus to Devinta. That should give you a few years of relative peace. The Canari said the Inquisition was unknowingly working for agents of Ben Harel. I gave no orders. You led us to Skyhold. Caripia should have died unlocking my orb. When he survived, my plans were thrown into chaos. When you survived, I saw the Inquisition as the best hope this world had of stopping him. And you needed a home. Hence, Skyhold. You gave your orb to Corypheus? Not directly. My agents allowed the Venatori to locate it. The orb had built up magical energy while I lay unconscious for millennia. 
I was not powerful enough to open it. The plan was for Corypheus to unlock it, and for the resulting explosion to kill him. Then I would claim the orb. I did not perceive the Vinter Magister having learned the secret of effective immortality. What would have happened if Corypheus had died and you'd recovered the orb? I would have entered the Fade using the mark you now bear. Then I would have torn down the veil. As this world burned in the raw chaos, I would have restored the world of my time. The world of the elves. If you destroyed the veil, wouldn't the false gods be freed? I had plans. I never thought of you as someone that would do that, Solas. Thank you. You must understand. I awoke in a world where the veil had blocked most people's conscious connection to the Fade. It was like walking through a world of tranquil. We aren't even people to you. Not at first. You showed me that I was wrong. Again. That does not make what must come next any easier. Whatever your reasons, we couldn't have defeated Corypheus without you. Your doubts are misplaced. Everything you accomplished, you earned. What's wrong with the Inquisition? You created a powerful organization, and now it suffers the inevitable fate of such. Betrayal and corruption. It's not that simple, isn't it? Perhaps we should ask your friend, the Iron Bull. Tell me, where is he? Do you know how I discovered the Canari plot? The plot I disrupted by leading him to your doorstep. The Canari spies in the Inquisition tripped over my spies in the Inquisition. The Elven Guard who led you to the Canari bot who intercepted the surf with the Gatlock Barrel? Mine. Why bother disrupting the Kanari plot if you're going to destroy the world regardless? You have shown me that there is value in this world, Inquisitor. I take no joy in what I must do. Until that day comes, I would see those recovering from the breach free of the Kuhn. Why? Because I am not a monster. If they must die, I would rather they die in comfort. In any event. It is done. I guess we owe you for that one, too. I hope it gives your people some final peace. You control the Illuvians now? Yes. You remember Briala from Halam Shiran? For a time, she controlled part of the labyrinth. One of my agents was supposed to take it from her. But he did not succeed. I had to override the magic personally. The Canari stumbled upon this section independently. With them gone, the Alluvians are now mine. There's still the matter of the anchor. It's getting worse. Yes. I'm sorry. We are almost out of time. Fucking cliffhanger. Free something must be done, but we cannot lose the Inquisition now. We stand on the brink of war with the Canari. Yes, because this Solas provoked them in the first place. The Inquisition did not cause this threat. We informed the summit of the danger. The danger posed by Konari spies inside your organization. Without our organization, you would not be alive to complain. <sighs> no one has forgotten what you have done. But Corypheus is two years dead. 
If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate organization, not a glorified mercenary band. Inquisitor? Justinia, authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach, find those responsible, and restore order, with or without anyone's approval. The Inquisition saved the people of Ferelden when you couldn't. We are not disbanding. And we are certainly not submitting to an Empress who only sits on her throne because we kept her there. There's worse coming than anything you've yet seen. So we'll play nice. We'll bow. Not to you. The Inquisition will act as Divine Victoria's personal honor guard. Answering directly to her, we will transition from a military force into a peacekeeping organization. My own adventuring days may be done, but the Inquisition and its mission Over the next several months, the Inquisition carefully gave over many of the duties it held. As the Vines, personal guard, and peacekeeping force, the Inquisition shrank to a more manageable size. Many who had served went home, though the remaining force was still enough to give pause to any who might threaten the Divine's plans. Those who served the new Inquisition were tested and checked thoroughly, in the hope of ferreting out any more spies within its ranks. Yeah, that's a problem. With the dragon's breath disrupted and ma any hope of a civil victory dash, the Knoi retreated back to the north. They're northerns? I thought they were in the south. What am I thinking of the Witcher? Few knew what debates were waged in Parvolon, but not long after the result of the council, the Knoi launched new attacks against Winter. Yeah, I think I was thinking of the guys in the Witcher. The regression caught the already unstable Imperium off guard. The winter was soon mired in a war many feared could spread across the others. The exalted council remained intact, advising Divine Victoria on important matters. Cassandra served for several years. While she often disagreed with Liana's policies, the former right and left hands of the Divine shared a mutual respect and worked well together. Cassandra also spent time in the Hunterhorn Mountains north of Orlais, where she worked to rebuild the Seekers.
For a time, the new seekers remained elusive, showing no interest in worldly affairs and working into a purpose few outside their order could guess. While Cassandra and the Inquisitor were often separated by duty, they still found time to be together. It was not unusual to see the Inquisitor appearing spatially at Cassandra's side or her at his as they worked to restore order. Those who knew her from earlier days said she, that while she was always true to her calling, they never had seen her smile so often. Cute. The end of the Inquisition as it had been sent shockwaves to the College of Enchanters, a rival circle of magi soon arose. The two institutions settled into an easy coexistence across the south, vying for power. After the exalted council, Liliana devoted herself fully to the Sunborg's throne and her dream of dream of reshaping the chantry. Within a year, she removed the restrictions surrounding chantry priesthood, allowing men and women of all races to be initiated and ordained. The decree was followed swiftly by a decision to return the Canticle of Shar Shatrand to the canonical chant, a move that divided Andrastrians deeply. A rebellion to renounce her and return the chantry to its former state arose, beginning first in Orlade and spreading to other parts of the Edus. As quickly as it began, the rebellion faltered. While most agreed that the rebellion collapsed due to infighting, some whispered that the divine herself engineered its failure. Yeah, Spy Master could fucking do that, yeah. The rebellion fractured into a number of separate cells, some of which limped on for several months before disappearing into obscurity. Sarah left the Inquisition with scarcely more, than, more ties than she began, disappearing back into her confusing wave of favors and friends. After seeing the world brought the brink of arrogance and pride, it was a blessing to return to normal, however strange a normal death it may be. With frequent visits to her widow, of course. Perhaps most unnerving was Sarah's standing offer to the Divine. When the knobs piss up about with your left hand or right, call on Red Ginny to give them two fingers. Varric returned to Kirkwall, where, as Vice County resumed his work rebuilding the damaged city infrastructure. I recognize that le uh, face on the right. Under his rule, the city state finally resumed its place as the major trade hub of the Free Marches. Get to see she's still fucking about. He continued to ignore all mail from both the Merchants Guild and the Prince of Starkhaven. It was never clear if the Iron Bull knew he would be forced to turn upon the Inquisition or if he was lying the entire time.
Regardless after his death, Tal Vashov, mercenaries across the Rhine of Ferelden were looked upon with suspicion. Those who remained in the south found their lives even harder as a result. After the Inquisition transitioned to a peacekeeping role, Colin continued to serve as commander of his forces. Under his leadership, the Inquisition protected the divine's interests while enforcing new standards of security. I bet he fucking would. Colin also expanded the Chantry's treatment for Templars whose minds were taken by the by Lyrium, as well as those who wished to cease Lyrium usage. And as chaos reignited in the north and threats to the divine lurked in every shadow, Colonel remained ready to serve. Hmm. Dorian returned to the winter to take his father's place in the magistrate. Magisterium. As rumors flew about the Imperium's infighting, Dorian was spoken as spoken often as a voice of resistance against corruption. Along with Magister Mael Tilani. He formed a group called the Lucerne to restore and redeem the winter, a fight many thought hopeless. After easing the Inquisition's transition into the Chantry, Josephine returned to Antiva and her family. In a few years, Josephine's parents stepped down and Josephine became the official head of House Montillier. She devoted her time to managing the estate's finances and navigating the social world of Antiva. Hmm. After the events of the, at the Winter Palace, elves left the Inquisition under mysterious circumstances. As it elven servants across Theodos. Yeah. I'm gonna guess Dragon Age 4 is gonna be a royal clusterfuck. None could say where they went, but those who believe the Inquisition story about Fen Harel wondered just how large the Dreadwolf's forces were. And what the ancient elf, elven rebels had planned. Forever marked. Earned. My agents have found nothing. With illusions, he could be anywhere. Maintaining the Inquisition, even as a peacekeeping force, leaves us vulnerable to agents of the Dread Wolf. But also gives us the strength to respond. <sighs> we will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us. Who we are, how we work, our strengths, and weaknesses. Then we find people he doesn't know. We will save our friend from himself. If we can. Good job guys, this is actually quite nice, except the last parts where I just got nuked in the ass, and even cash was fucking hard. But yeah, this has been a long ass journey. Now yeah, with Dragon Age Inquisition's about two years and change, give or take, two years and a couple of weeks. But with Dragon Age as a whole, it's been around since the beginning of my 
channel. So six years, seven actually, nearly, would have been seven full in April. I started with Dragon Age 1. So now is the question what comes next? What fills the Sunday slot? At least up until Dragon Age 4 comes out, which will probably be in a couple of years I'd imagine. Plans are to be around then, but yeah. Bit of time to burn until then though. Mm. Well, till then, catch you guys and gals next week, or if you guys were only here for Dragon Age stuff, see you in a few years. Till then though. Thank you for watching, or more precisely surviving up until this point, because guys know the editing's kind of interesting and my voice has a melodic tone to it. If you like what you saw, feel free to hit the subscribe button, like button, it does help out the statistics of the channel, gets more visible, you know, stuff like that. And to be honest, at one point I would like to actually make this a job so I can do better content with better quality, more games, more coverage, you know, stuff like that. Take care.